Hey guys, I'm Archana from Edureka and I welcome you all to this live session on test automation strategy. Before we proceed, let's take a look at today's agenda so that you guys know what we will be discussing here actually. So we will begin this discussion by talking about what is test automation, why is it so important and which test cases should we actually automate. Then we will move on to our today's topic which is test automation strategy. We will discuss why is having a test automation strategy critical to test automation. Then we will take a look at building blocks of testing automation strategy. Finally, we will end this session by talking about benefits of having a test automation strategy. So I hope agenda is clear to you guys. Let's get started then. On April 26, 1994, aircraft named Airbus A300 was completing a routine flight and approach when just before landing at airport, it crashed. The crash killed about 264 people. And till today, the accident remains the deadliest accident in the history of China Airlines. Similarly, on August 14, 2003, shortly after 2 p.m., a high voltage power line in Northern Ohio brushed against some overgrown trees and shut down completely. That day, 50 billion people lost power for up to two days in biggest blackout in North American history. Normally, the problem would have tripped an alarm and control room, but due to software issues, the alarm system literally failed. On April of 1999, there was failure of a $12 billion military satellite launch. It was due to some sort of glitch in satellite's guidance system. Now, what do you think these three events have in common besides being very public examples of technology failures? Well, they are examples of situations that might have been avoided if proper testing had been done on relevant systems. Adequate testing of systems prior to installation might have caught few bugs that contributed to these events. While those events were serious, they happened a number of years ago when the world wasn't quite as connected as it is today. The business world has taken advantage of this connectedness and we are able to do things much faster and safer than before. So testing is an integral part of any successful software product. Software testing basically is the process of executing the software or any sort of application to find out if there are any bugs or some sort of errors in it. Before software actually goes public, programmers spend hours trying, out, trying to iron out every little bug there is. They check for any mistakes and problem in the design and the functionality of the software or application. Until then, product won't be available for commercial use in the market. Software testing is broadly classified as manual testing and automated testing. In manual testing, testing of a web application is done manually by human action. This means that someone actually goes on a device to evaluate numerous components including design, functionality and performance of software. But testing to find defects or bugs manually is time consuming, expensive, often repetitive and being humans we make errors. This is where automation testing comes into picture. Automation testing uses the assistance of tools, scripts and software to perform test cases on various levels of software. Automation is everywhere. Amazon is testing delivery drones that pick up warehouse orders sorted by robots. Google is testing self-driving cars. Starbucks is testing cashier-free stores dedicated to mobile ordering and payment. And Facebook is testing a brain-computer interface that may one day translate your thoughts into digital text. Fascinating, right? But why are these companies so hyped, at, uh, hyped up about automating the software testing process? That's because test automation offers a lot of benefits. Manual testing can be mundane, error-prone, time-consuming and even boring. But test automation enables testers to focus more on challenging and rewarding work and in turn increases the accuracy of the results. 
test automation saves lot of time and effort. It even offers better test coverage. An increased test coverage leads to testing more features and a higher quality of application. So it provides cross cross browser and cross device testing as well. Test automation makes it possible to execute test cases during off peak hours and to distribute them in parallel across multiple physical or virtual servers. It also reduces business expenses. I do agree that initial investment may be higher, but return of investment or ROI as we refer to it is also high in longer run. Also, test automation reduces manual intervention. And since you are using automation tools, less number of people will be required for a project and they can be utilized for other projects. So guys, these are some advantages of using test automation. Automation testing is absolutely essential today to successfully deliver large scale products that need execution of repetitive and complex test cases. That sounds good, but it is impossible to automate all testing. So it is important to determine which test cases should be automated first. When it comes to figuring out where to start automating, there are some top candidates that will help you recognize the maximum return on investment. So these are some test cases guys. Firstly, repetitive tasks are primary candidates. Not only are those tasks boring to you, but they are often the ones where you actually make mistakes. Because when you do a task repeatedly, we as humans often make mistakes. Automate them and do something more fun. Capturing and sharing results is a critical part to a successful test strategy. So rather than manually exporting your data, crunching numbers and making complex graphs, invest in a tool or automation strategy that will do this task for you. You can also automate tests that require multiple data sets. And instead of waiting for on-screen response, Automate the task. That way you do not have to waste time staring at the screen and waiting for a response. Another case where you can automate is load testing. Well, think about having to see if your application can handle uh, a load of 10,000 users. Automate this testing so that you do not have to worry about manually spinning up 10,000 users hitting your application all at the same time. You can also automate test cases that run on several different hardware or software platforms and configurations. Because testing software with multiple configurations on different platforms manually takes lot of time and effort on your part. So guys, these are some cases where you can actually apply test automation. Now once the decision has been made to use test automation, the next issue is how are we actually going to do this? What's the plan? One of the most common mistakes with automation testing is going for immediate benefits and forgetting about the bigger picture. Uh, many teams abandon their automation efforts after a sprint or two and go back to manual testing. Now, why do you think that happens? Most of the time, most of these companies use automation just because others are using it. They're not sure of the right way to implement the test automation. They do not have the right automated testing methods in place. They do not know when to implement test automation and when not to. They're not aware of the right set of tools that meet their requirements. So what I'm trying to say here is that success in test automation requires careful planning and design work. To achieve high quality software within a short period of time is one of the objectives of every software company and I'm sure you guys know that. To achieve that, they either can save few days of planning and instead spend weeks testing or programming or they can spend a little time developing a proper test automation strategy to keep pace, to keep pace with the market. So to build a cost effective automation testing strategy with a result oriented approach is always a key to success in automation testing. Well, you can build a good test automation strategy once you understand automation test life cycle. So let's explore that. Automation test life cycle has following phases. The first one is automation feasibility analysis. So basically in this step, you check the feasibility of automation as in 
you shortlist the test cases which you want to automate you select the right tool that fits your requirement and all that next step is test strategy in test strategy you select the test automation framework well you have multiple options to choose from here like you have linear test automation framework you have data driven framework you have keyword driven framework modular framework and hybrid as well if you guys want to know more about these test automation frameworks you can actually refer to the previous live session in the playlist listed below in the description well let's move moving on in this phase you can create a test place test plan and test automation suite in your test management tool so the next step is environment setup in this phase you set up the testing environment and acquire the required hardware and software tools to execute the automated test cases that's pretty simple and the next step is script development in this phase you start creating the automation test scripts according to your requirements but make sure that your scripts are reusable well structured and well documented this will help you in long term if you're automated obviously the next step would be case execution in this phase you execute your test cases and finally we have result generation and analysis this is the last phase of test automation life cycle in this phase you analyze the output of test cases and share the reports with stakeholders so now that we are aware of the automation test life test life cycle let's have a look at the building block of test automation strategy it consists of eight items for you to consider as you head out on your automation journey and those would be scope of automation test automation approach automation test environment risk analysis execution plan review and failure analysis automation maturity model so let's explore each of them a little deeper oh guys before you start i just wanted to say that these blocks are not listed in any particular order okay let's get started now so the first thing is scope of automation defining a project scope for an automation perspective includes outlining timelines milestones for each sprint in the project so the two most important things that you do here in the scope of automation is shortlisting the test cases which you want to automate and selecting the right test automation tool guys you can't automate everything so you should be smart about your priorities if you are focusing on high return of investment one of the best model that can help you with that task is mike cohen's test automation period pyramid using this you can decide which test cases to automate the pyramid shows that in general you should try to push test down to the lowest level possible unit test or ui test sorry unit test are the quick to write they have the highest return of investment and should ideally form the backbone of your automation testing strategy strategy developers can write unit test to check the smallest pieces of their code and find bugs on their own after unit test we have regression test it should be your next priority as the return investment after each successful build Next you need to check functionality and other quality characteristics such as accessibility and security across large piece of application with functional testing. So what I mean is that after unit testing and regression testing it's functional testing. Then comes user interface test. Although pretty common automating at graphical user interface level is highly impractical. That's because user interface requirements keep changing which makes automation more complex and user interface tests are expensive they require heavy maintenance and the written high number of false positive or you can say negative cases so these are how you shortlist the test cases so no matter how skilled you are in automation how many selenium commands you know or what testing frameworks you use something simply cannot be automated like user interface test they have ever changing requirements and they're difficult to automate so automation there is not suggested similarly when you have exhaustive document even then automation is not suggested and suppose if you have test that you're going to execute only once why do you need automation when you can do that 
using manual testing in short amount of time and without much effort and you also have tests which are based on visual perception you have anti automation features like captcha i'm sure you've come across it and you also have ad hoc and exploratory testing where you can chuck system based on your based on your knowledge of its internal workings and experience so manual touch is definitely needed there so automation is not possible in ad hoc and exploratory testing so this is how you shortlist cases that you want to automate so once you've decided on which test cases to automate and which not next step is to collect the appropriate testing tools that suit your requirement Selecting the right tool is the key factor that guarantees the success of your test automation strategy. You need to select one out of several test automation tools that are available in the market. Well, that can be a difficult task because there are a lot of and tons of tons of automation tools in the market. So in order to select the tool that fits best for your project, first you need to understand your project requirements thoroughly and then you need to identify the testing scenarios that you want to automate based on these two you need to shortlist your tools that support your project's requirement then you need to identify your budget for the automation tool once you have once you have an idea of the budget you can sh further shortlist the tools based on your budget after that you can shortlist tools based on certain parameters like licensing cost of tool maintenance cost training and support tool extensibility tool performance and stability so you can follow these three simple tests before you actually select a proper automation tool there are plenty of cost effective tools available in the market for automating different kind of applications like windows application web application websites mobile web applications native mobile applications and many more and some of the popular automation tools that you can use to automate any kind of application are selenium then you have microsoft coded ui framework then you have hp qtp and many others so that's the first block moving on to next one it is test automation approach when choosing a test automation approach guys there are three areas which you have to consider process technology and rules well we already discussed about process and technology in the previous block which is how to actually short your shortlist your test cases and how to select a tool and all that but anyway let's go through it again so first process test automation rollout must be a well defined and structured process so make sure to cover the following in your plan like when during the sprint should automate test cases to be dev developed as in when you actually should develop your automated test cases during what time what are the features which are ready for automated testing which features should be tested manually who take who take care of the maintenance how do you analyze results so all these questions you need to include in your plan so after process its technology identify the applications which you have to automate figure out which technology they are based on and whether or not your test automation platform supports those technologies then you have rules here you define the roles for automation in the test automation team as in your test automation team make sure that all members know who is responsible for which part of automation project guys all members of a test team including domain specialist technical testers and test management they play very important role in making test automation actually work for example you have automation lead or engineer he is responsible for coordinating and managing all activities regarding automation in the project and it one and when it comes to test case you have test case designer one who designs the test case and reviewer once the test case designer designs them to have a second look we have reviewer so this way you have different roles so remember remember that Success with automation is dependent on a team's collective knowledge. Adopt a test automation platform that all testers can work with so that automation becomes a natural part of daily work of all your team members. Other thing that you should that you can focus here are reusability of automation scripts. Your test automation strategy must ensure include the reusability of test scripts. This will help you reduce scripting development efforts. 
there are many general functionalities which are common in applications you come across them especially if you're a company who is taking projects which is related to a single domain for example let's say if your company develops web applications you can create a process to reuse testing scripts for login and validation test cases so instead of writing same test cases again and again you can store them in a file and reuse them again then you should make sure to include manual testing Automation testing isn't a replacement for manual testing. It's just an extension of manual testing. So no matter how great automated tests are, you cannot automate everything. We even discussed some cases where you can actually not automate, right? So manual tests play a very important role in software development and they come in handy whenever you cannot automate the process. So don't try to automate everything. And the next point is we have something called release control. In any release pipeline, Regardless of its complexity and maturity, there's a point where a team should decide whether to release a build or not. Part of this decision making can be automated, while other parts still require human touch. In any case, make sure that the results from the test automation are part of the release decision. So final decision regarding release will often be based on a combination of algorithm results and manual inspection. Moving on to next one, we have something called risk analysis. Risk analysis, as you guys know, is an essential part of project planning in general. But it is important to consider this specifically in automation as well. So you can create a risk plan with parameters like description, which describes what's the risk all about. Then you have risk level or severity. What will happen if the risk becomes reality? How hard will it hit the project? Then you have something called probability. What is the likeliness that it can occur? Then you have mitigation. What can be done to minimize the risk? And then you have cost estimate in the end. Which, what is the cost of mitigating the risk? What is the cost of not doing it? Well, these are just basic parameters. You can consider several more. Let's consider a simple example. As you can see, the first risk, it says, we do not have enough trained resources to create test automation. And what will the, that lead to? This will lead to lower test coverage as more manual regression testing must be performed before release. This in turn might delay the release. So what will happen if the test becomes reality? How hard will it hit the project? Very high. And what's the probability that this risk might turn into reality? Well, it's medium. And what do you do if it has actually occurred? You can contract partners or you can contract training providers. Alternatively, you can educate the workers in your office so that they can handle more load. And what about the estimate cost? It says TBD, it means time-based decision. Similarly, next risk, it says test servers will not be able to keep up with the load from the automated regression test, which will lead to high number of false failures in the reporting. And what's the risk level? Medium, and the probability is medium. And what you could do, you can contact operations and make sure that the servers are configured to cope with expected load. Now, what about the cost? It's about $10,000. So this way you can create a risk document. But one more important thing is that risk plan is a dynamic document as in it keeps changing. It's not fixed. So risk will be added and removed to the list as the project evolves. We are oh, so the next one in the test is test automation environment. Setting up your test environment is another building block of test automation strategy, guys. You can establish your automation testing environment by following certain steps. First of all, first by identifying the requirements of test environment, then by acquiring the required tools with their licenses. And you can also consider the data, which is part of test cases, like where do you have to store the data, which belongs to test case? Should the data be masked or not masked? Do we need to have backup for the data? What up? Sorry, guys. What happens to the data after testing? What should be done with it? So you can ask these questions. You can consider the test data requirements as well. Test automation is a deterministic game. Known inputs will produce predictable outputs. This means that stable and predictable test environment is a prerequisite for successful test automation. After that, we have execution and management of test cases. Your test automation strategy 
should also define the process of execution and management of test cases. An execution plan actually outlines two things, which is the day-to-day -day tasks that you do and the procedures which are related to automation. There are certain practices that you can follow when you're writing test scripts and when you're executing them. For example, first of all, pick the test cases which you want to automate like I told you in the first step. After that, before you add any automated test cases to your regression suit, run and verify them multiple times to ensure that they run as expected. Next, you need to define a set of best practices that make test cases resistant to changes in system which is being automated. So your test cases should be written in such a way that even when the requirements of your system which you're automation, automating is changing, they shouldn't be affected. Next, you can actually run your tests in parallel. This means that use pipeline orchestrator like Jenkins, TFS, Bamboo, many other things, or a scheduling tool to execute test cases in parallel. This way, feedback from the test is sent to developers at very fast rate. So guys, you can never test too much and the combination of test automation, reliable test cases, and scheduled or controlled execution will always give you a positive effect at the end of your automation. One more thing, after executing a test case, assign a status either pass or fail with it. In automated testing, this status is assigned to the test cases automatically according to your success criteria. If it's a fail, you have to perform failure analysis, which is actually our next step. Failure analysis and reporting results. So having a plan for how to actually analyze the failed test cases and how to resolve them is a critical part of test automation strategy. Often, time taken to notify the failure, analyze it, and resolve it is much longer than you actually anticipate. So having a well-defined process for this can save a lot of time and frustration in development team. So what you can do is you can outline how different errors should be handled and by whom. For example, let's say you have some issues related to environment, the test environment. You can raise a ticket with DevOps team. And suppose if you have a bug with automation scripts, you can create a task for testing team. Similarly, if you have a bug in the application which, on which you're performing automation or you're testing, you can actually flag a bug for development team. This way you can outline different errors, who should handle and how they should. So once your error handling is done, next thing, all the things that you've done till now, including the methods that you adopted to implement automation, test results, pros and cons of the test automation strategy that you have used here should be captured and documented for future reference. Then you need to continuously improve your test automation strategy by learning from those lessons. So the last thing is to revamp your test automation strategy. You can't directly develop a perfect test automation strategy very first time. You make it perfect by improving it every time you find a fault with it. Automation maturity model is a way you can use to revamp automation test strategy. Automation maturity model is divided into multiple phases. For example, you have something called initial phase. So guys, basically before explaining the phases, all you do in this revamp is you actually go through everything that you did in your previous strategy and find the errors and replace them as in resolve them. So where were we initial phase here? Prerequisites of automation should be completed. Then you have something called manage phase. Automation is achieved without any central infrastructure in this phase, as in there's no dependency. Then you have define phase. Central automated process across the application lifecycle should be built here. Then you have something called measured phase. Your collected and analyzed metrics of automated process should be compared against your business goals here. And finally, you have optimized phase here things like self-service automation or learning about automation by looking at the analysis results which we call self-learning using analytics and self remediation should be addressed here or actually addressed in this phase so using automation maturity model you can revamp your test automation strategy until you find it fit for your organization so guys this way you find a strategy that's best for you it's very much necessary to come up with an intelligent test automation strategy to fully enjoy the benefits of automation testing 
and achieve the desired level of success. A successful test automation strategy can lead to big things. It's true. A successful testing strategy and framework can positively impact your business and organization in number of ways. First of all, it provides you more comprehensive testing. The most complex test automation tasks are completed easily when you have a strategy and your products become more robust as a result. It also promotes the reuse of critical components. By reusing the critical components, it increases employee productivity since the time they would have spent on manual tests is saved by the reuse of components. So what I'm trying to say is, instead of them manually doing each thing again and again, they can use the reusability scripts. They can invest their time into other critical areas of their work and business. It also reduces maintenance cost. You can change and update your testing methodologies more easily. Because you have taken time to plan and design your solution, your employees adopt these changes quickly and very easily and they have very less maintenance work to do when it comes to automated test solution. It also creates the testing standard for your organization. Your strategy will become the standard that's used across your organization because it's complete and robust. And finally, if your strategy is based on result-oriented approach, it will give quick confidence about your product to stakeholders as well. So guys, these are some key benefits of developing a test automation strategy. I hope the above strategies help you as you head out on your automation journey. We've almost reached the end of the session, guys. So thank you, guys. I hope you've liked the session. Meet you in the next session.